So this is the second video in the water jet cam uh, playlist. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is in this video, we're going to learn about how to do cam operations and how to finish up our cam and get it ready for the machine. So this is where we were. We had our CAD done. We had our setup done. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a cutting operation. So for that, we're going to go to fabrication tab and looks like we're already there. And we're going to go for 2D profile under cutting. There's only one option. This makes it quite easy. So once we click 2D profile, it's asking us to select a tool. Now to select a tool, we go to BIDC WaterJet. Now keep in mind these names can change, but it will usually have an indicator for what uh, tools it has. Uh, and it's always going to be in cloud. So we go ahead and we click on flow fl phaser for cutting head. And we select that and we hit select. Once we do that, we have a couple of cutting modes. There's auto, high quality, medium quality, low quality, and etch. We don't really support etch, so try not to use it. Uh, I haven't used it before. Someone can try it out and we can see if it actually works on our water jet. But I have used all of these. Now, I know everyone is tempted to go to high quality, but I would tell you this, the higher the quality, the longer it takes for the water jet to actually uh, cut out your part. So medium is a good place to start or even auto is a good place to start. So if I go to medium, what I need to now then do is define the area I want to cut. So I'm in geometry tab and some people might click on this. Now what's the problem with this? The problem with this is that the moment you cut this out, this central piece is now loose. And when you try to punch these holes in, the piece can move around. So it's not a good idea to try and cut this first. So what we're gonna do is we're going to target all the holes and I can sometimes turn off the stock to make this easier. I'm gonna go for this, 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 and this. So I'm going to go cut out all the holes. Next, I'm going to go to heights and in heights, the main thing that I really need to make sure is the top height is always stock top. It should never be below stock top because if you hover over here, that's the height at which the uh, cutting tool is going to go. And if you accidentally place that below the stock or inside the stock, the cutting head is going to try to go inside the stock, which is not something we want. So make sure that's there. Retract height and clearance height just need to be higher. So retract height needs to be higher than top height and clearance height needs to be higher than or equal to retract height. The defaults are pretty good here, so you really don't need to mess around with them. And you can hover over these to just get tips about what they are and what they control. The next tab is passes tab. Now, for the most part, if you modeled your part, everything should work correctly. You shouldn't really need to do anything with passes. Now, one thing I'm going to do is check these arrows. So the arrow indicates where the tool should be, and it's automatically detecting that it should place the tool on this side of the cut in order to produce a correct dimension part. Now, if you've modeled your things correctly, these arrows should place and align automatically. But if you skipped and used a sketch, you might have to explicitly flip around arrows, which I think you do within the uh, passes tab. But in our case, we don't really have to do that. So we are good. Other things I want you guys to think about is uh, stock to leave. Now in the water jet, we don't really use stock to leave, but let's say you need it to tolerance a feature you could potentially leave extra room, cut it out and measure and see how much variation there is. And then accordingly overshoot or undershoot use undershoot using stock to leave. That's more of an advanced feature. So we're not really going to cover that. The linking tab for the most part can be ignored and we're going to click. Okay. 
I want you guys to pay close attention and it'll help if I turn off at least one of the parts. So if you guys see this red arrow is indicating where the water jet starts and this green arrow is indicating where it's done. So the water jet's going to come in, yellow indicates it's going to move fast and then it'll start the water and green indicates lead in. So there are three types of motions, rapids, lead in lead outs or they're called linking and cutting motion. Rapids are always going to be yellow. This is when your water jet is moving between places and not cutting. Linking is always going to be green. This is when your water jet is switching from rapid to cutting motion or cutting motion to rapid. That's always going to be green. In green, the water jet is going to cut. And blue is when it's doing a simple cutting motion when it's just continuously cutting. So as we can see, water jet comes down, starts the water, cuts, forms a circle, comes out, switches, stops the water, jumps up, goes on to the next one, next one, so on and so forth. So that's the operation. Now, this green portion is something you might need to control. So this hole is pretty big. But if you had a much smaller hole, the green V section actually just has a fixed dimension. It's not going to scale with the hole. And that can sometimes lead to error while you're uh, generating toolpath. So you can actually control how big or small that is. So right now lead in distance is set to this value. I'm going to make it absurdly big, one inch. Click OK. And now you guys can see that I suddenly make, made this pretty big. And um, if you were working with a tiny hole, you might have to just make it smaller and smaller so the green portion stays in the area where you're not going to use that central piece and fits within the hole. Another thing we can do to help is there is no lead in radius, so I can provide a radius of a quarter inch and click OK. And now you can see that it curves into the cut and then curves out. Depending on your application, you might or might not need this. I'll kind of leave this up to the peer mentor who's working with you to decide what's appropriate for your application. The next thing I want you guys to learn about are tabs. Now, in this case, it really doesn't matter if uh, this section falls into the water jet after it's cut. But you might want to preserve it and you might have small pieces that once they're fully cut, you don't want them to fall. In those situations, you will use a tab and I'll show you how to modify this to have tabs. So when you go here, you can enable tabs under the geometry section and you can do it a couple of ways by distance or at a point. So I can say, let's do it by distance and I want a tab every two inches. So if I click OK, now you can see that it's placing two ta four tabs for each and every one of those sections. So these are where the tabs are going to be. Now that's a bit absurd, so maybe I might want to go and uh, change the tab distance to be something like, uh, let me see, five inches and I see one in each of these areas. So this is acceptable. Maybe I want it to be a bit more explicit. I just want to specifically select where I want my tab. So I'll switch to at a point and we'll only do it for one of these. So I want a tab here and that creates a tab there. So that's how you set the tabs, but you should also control tab width. So there are two competing factors. You want to make sure that you don't accidentally lose your part and it doesn't flip around and run into the water jet. But at the same time, you also want to make sure that your part that you're being that you're holding with tabs can easily come out. So I feel and this is subjective, it's based on the material and the thickness that this tab is unnecessarily thick for steel. So I might want to do a smaller tab. So let's do 0.01. And as you guys can see, there's a tiny tab there right now. And maybe I'm satisfied that this is OK and this will work. And I can just click OK. 
and it's going to do a tab here but it's going to ignore all of the places because I had not defined a tab anywhere else. So let's see that in simulation. And there are a couple of settings in simulation I want you to check. Make sure your opacity is cranked up to 100% for model. Your stock is enabled. Your accuracy is set to low. You can increase it if you have a very nice computer. Keep it low if you don't have that nice of a computer and the mode is set to comparison toolpath should be enabled you should have these these options checked and your mode should be tail tool should be enabled you can keep your tool transparent so you can see clearly and now you can hit play so as you guys are seeing the head is cutting out the section And I can speed it up slightly. Okay. And all I need to do now is just zoom in and see how the cuts are. So here we can see that there is a very thin connection between this plate and that uh, plate over there. It might be too thin. It's something again you'll have to experiment and learn. And here we can see that there is no connection that central plate is going to drop the moment it's done with the cut. Same thing in the other locations. But we can also see that we have not cut the outside boundary. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got the outside profile and I do encourage people to label these. So sorry, inside holes makes it easier when you're uh, consulting on them i'm going to create another operation which is going to be of type 2d profile and i'm going to select a tool now here's a key thing that people make a mistake of so once you've selected a tool from the cloud library it creates a copy of it in your document you should not then reselect the tool for other operations again from the cloud library. So I'm going to repeat this and walk, uh, like try to understand this. There's a tool in the cloud library and then there's your document. Once you use a tool in the cloud library, it creates a copy in your document. So if you're going to use that tool again for other operations, you access it from your document. If you access it from your cloud library, you're going to have to consistently and continuously have new instances of the tool. So if you have made multiple selections from the cloud library, you might have 20 instances of the water jet head, which is not useful and can get problematic when you're generating code for the machine. So hopefully you understood that. If you didn't, do ask your peer mentor about it and they can explain the concept. So in this case, I'm going to go to my document, go to setup and select the same tool because there is only one tool for the water jet. And for some reason, I really want the outside to be high quality. So I'm going to go for high quality and then I'm going to select my geometries. And there we go. Now, do I need a tab for this or not? The answer to the question, the size of the tab, the location and where we need it or not need it is very dependent on the size of your features, the material and the uh, orientation it is sitting in the water jet. So that is something that is best figured out with a peer mentor. So for now, we're not going to add any tabs and just click OK. And as you can see, it starts out there and starts making sections all around. And we have our finished part. So we'll do a full simulation by selecting the setup. We'll speed through it. Hole, 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 another hole, one more, another one, last one. Then cut out this boundary. Cut out another boundary. One more. And one more. 
and the cam is done and we see no collisions no errors and we're good we can quickly inspect it to make sure the boundaries have actually been cut out you can also see that there was a tab here you can also see that for the first operations we made these absurdly big with radiuses but for the second operation it was using the default values for lead in and lead out or linking and statistics tells me this is going to take 26 minutes that's uh, not a good estimate because it can change based on the hardness of the material but that's a good ballpark value so i'm going to exit simulation the next thing i need to do is create an nc program so the way you do that is you right click on this actually you right click here create NC program and once you do this it's going to automatically check this automatically fill in the machine and automatically select the post if it does not do these automatically and there are errors you might want to check these settings are correct for the machine if you followed my tutorial accurately you should not have to do that but if you had some mistakes in the middle you might need to explicitly define these. Do take the help of a peer mentor while doing that. The next thing you need to do is click on post to fusion team. And then you have to select a specific folder for the water jet. So we're going to come here. We're going to go to net share. And we are going to double click water jet. And what you should see in the location is net share water jet if you don't see that then there's something you need to fix in the background hit save these options sh here should be good by default operations allows you to partially post your code meaning let's say i might not want to do the holes and i decide the design changed i don't need the holes i can unselect them or i can keep the holes but i don't need the outside profile i can unselect that too but for the most part you will just be doing things in a way where you're running the entire setup and you're going to click OK, not post. OK. So you have the NC program as well. I'm going to do a quick labeling outside. And for the NC program, I'm going to label this as code settings. And with that, you effectively have everything you need in order for a peer mentor to approve your cam. So go to a peer mentor on Discord, have them look at your cam. If everything's good, they'll give it a seal of approval and you can make a reservation, come in and run the water jet. If there are mistakes, they'll just ask you to fix it, fix it and then get a cam approval. That's it for water jetting. It's not that complicated. I hope you guys have a good time. I do want to point out that it does take a bit of time to set up on the water jet. So do factor that in when figuring out reservations. Good luck to you all on the water jet. See you guys next time.